this is section one of eight in chapter six, Responsibility, from the book, Unlocking Your Potential for Greatness, The Soul of Leadership by Deepak Chopra. Leading from the soul means taking responsibility for more than the group's needs. It means having concern for everyone's personal growth. This responsibility begins with your own evolution. In eight areas of your life, you have the power to be guided by your soul. Thoughts, emotions, perception, personal relationships, social role, environment, speech, and the body. In all of these areas, your behavior affects the people you lead. If you evolve, so will they. Leading from the soul means that evolution is your top priority. You never act in such a way as to lower the self-esteem of others. You examine your underlying beliefs and modify them as new opportunities for growth reveal themselves. Because evolution is an unstoppable force in the universe, you draw upon invisible powers. Therefore, being responsible is no longer a burden. It rests lightly on you as long as you continue to grow. Every leader takes on responsibilities, but if you lead from the soul, you have a different perspective. You take responsibility for your own evolution and the evolution of those around you. You've chosen to start out with a vision. In order to fulfill it, you walk a path that is about much more than external success. The inner person is growing every step of the way. The group is having higher needs fulfilled. So how do you equip yourself to keep evolving? Personal commitment plays a part, but to what do you commit? Once this question is answered, you'll know what your responsibilities actually are from day to day. Your soul doesn't make any demands because it isn't involved in activity. Therefore, your responsibility arises only when you have to act, think, and feel. Seeds are forever sprouting in silence. Each seed is a possibility arising from the field of infinite possibilities. A seed may sprout as your next thought. Your responsibility then is to make your next thought evolutionary. It should promote growth and progress. But a possibility doesn't always manifest as a thought. It could be a sensation an action, or a word. Possibilities encompass every aspect of life. Your soul is capable of giving you anything you want, but the other side of the bargain is that you are responsible for what you ask for. Knowing what to ask for can be quite subtle. However beautiful and inspiring your overall vision, there are thousands of details that must be worked out on a daily basis. A leader may be dedicated to building world peace or to working for a sustainable economy or to finding an alternative to fossil fuels. In comparison to such lofty goals, it seems petty to consider the next word you are about to say or the next sensation you will feel in your body. But these are a part of the fabric of life. And if they don't evolve, your vision won't evolve either. The fabric of life is incredibly complex and interwoven, but we can find eight main strands, each with its own set of responsibilities. The joy of looking at the subject from this perspective is that you will be taking on responsibility, not as a burden, but as a way of nurturing yourself. Ask yourself one question. Will I evolve by doing this? And if the answer is yes, accept the responsibility for your choice. A leader's responsibilities can be divided into the following eight areas. 
I am responsible for what I think. I am responsible for how I feel. I am responsible for how I perceive the world. I am responsible for my relationships. I am responsible for my role in society. I am responsible for my immediate environment. I am responsible for my speech. I am responsible for my body. Now let's take a look at each of these in more detail. I am responsible for what I think. This is the field of cognition, which is much broader than rational thoughts. It also covers insight, intuition, gut feelings, and creative impulses. Because they come to us spontaneously, we tend to accept that thoughts roam the mind at will. If that's true, how can we be responsible for mental impulses as they come and go? After all, you don't know what your next idea or hunch will be. But thoughts come in patterns. You have habits of thinking. These you can take responsibility for. Promote the good habits and avoid the bad ones. Successful leaders have learned to do both, often without knowing it, although a good percentage had to train their minds to meet the demands of being a leader. Good mental habits. Think clearly and concisely. Weed out prejudices and personal biases. Examine your assumptions to make sure they aren't secondhand or unproved. Explore every thought in depth. Pay attention to subtle impulses, focusing on them until they expand and unfold. See each thought without judging or dismissing it prematurely. Walk around and see your thought from several angles. Be sure you aren't influenced too much by stress, emotion, or the heat of the moment. Be above the drama of the situation. Each of these points is something you can take responsibility for. Left to itself, the untended mind is neither clear nor concise. It needs to be trained to prune away repetition. In place of fuzzy, vague thinking, you shape your thoughts clearly, wording them concisely. The same attention is needed for all the other points. Unless we pay attention, prejudice creeps into our thinking automatically. That's the nature of habit, to reappear on its own. Time and again, you have to pull up and say, this isn't what I want to think. It's just old conditioning from the past, a stale repetition of what I used to think. With cognition, your overall responsibility is to be self-aware. Only you can spot the effect that emotions and stress are having. No outside perspective can substitute for yours even though trusted advisors can bring you to your senses by pointing out where you've lost clarity. Notice that two things are not on the list, organization and discipline. Some leaders owe their success to having a highly organized and disciplined mind. Examine closely, the need to force your mind into a discipline is like training a wild animal whose behavior you don't trust and whose wildness is undesirable. But as restless as the mind can be, it is also the source of spontaneous answers and solutions. Spontaneity requires freedom, and it's difficult for something to be free and disciplined at the same time. Of course, your mind can't be left ragged and wild. Even the pure artist who cannot tolerate rules or boundaries will accept the discipline of learning his craft. You can take your cue from that. Discipline your mind as a means of mastering your craft, but then let it be free. Otherwise, 
you will dismiss too many stray thoughts that in fact have something to tell you. In the same vein, allow every subtle impulse of the mind, the vaguest hunch or intimation to expand. This is particularly true when you feel a slight, uh-oh. Under the pressure to agree with others, to find quick solutions, to be rid of a problem, we all jump to faulty conclusions. But the soul can't be fooled by externals. And when you feel, however subtly, that something isn't quite right, you must trust yourself. In fact, the subtler the uh-oh, the more it can be trusted. <laughs>